Well, good, good afternoon, uh, Worldview class. I, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, it's uh, when you see this, when you watch this, it'll be Friday. So casual Friday. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I've got got my casual, a little bit more casual stuff on today, which which I'm sure you can handle. Um, real quickly, I I've been going through uh, a lot of the the reviews you guys have been submitting and and just grading them and and reading through and grading those and and posting them online. So a lot of your a lot of your film and worldview reviews that you've been submitting to me um, should should be reflected in the converged scores. So uh, just be looking for those. Um, I have also posted the uh, the student excuse me the student um, YouTube links so that so that you can watch the the five minute excuse me the five minute presentations by students. Uh, so yesterday, uh, you you probably had an opportunity, or most of you, I think, had an opportunity to to watch um, the presentations on City Slickers, and then I'll be posting the student presentations on Hitchcock's Rope that you'll have access to when you're watching this tomorrow, either later tonight or tomorrow, most likely tomorrow. Uh, on Monday, we're going to be talking about existentialism, uh, secular existentialism. So we'll, we'll just keep moving forward, make sure that you're aligned with the, the updated syllabus that I posted to Converge. And we'll just keep carrying forward with that. Um, I miss, miss being around you guys, miss seeing you and, and interacting with you in our classroom. Um, I I'm strongly prefer that, but I think we should be able to make this work reasonably well. And, and I'm just gonna try to, to bring you along with a couple of insights regarding the worldviews that connect to some of these pop culture iconic elements. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Nietzsche and I'm gonna mention a, a couple of things that I want you to watch, uh, a couple of links that I've posted to Converge that I'm gonna want you to look at in conjunction with Nietzsche's worldview and pop culture. So, uh, just a couple of things, just a couple of reminders regarding Nietzsche. Um, let me, one second. So Nietzsche is, making sure I, I have the slides that I intended. Remember, Nietzsche talked an awful lot. Um, his, his notions of life are often associated with, with nihilism, which in, you know, in, Kind of a pop culture reference, a pop culture framework. The whole notion of, you know what? I'm pretty warm. I'm going to take this thing off. Ugh. Sorry, guys. I want to not go over my coffee either. I've got my my trusty uh, Snoopy the Red Baron mug here, right? Snoopy versus the Red Baron. Uh, one of my my favorite parts of the Peanuts comic strip. Um, so Nietzsche and, and nihilism, the, the idea that, that there is a severe lack of meaning in life, this is often associated with not only nihilism, but projected onto Nietzsche himself. We have already contended against that a little bit, although certainly I would not say that, that Nietzsche's philosophy uh, allows for a very optimistic framework. That is probably true. Uh, I do not think that he aligns or that he would align as neatly with modern concepts of nihilism as some might believe. So we've talked about that a little bit. Remember that, that Nietzsche was in large measure arguing for human beings to, to embrace life, uh, to, in, to embrace life's challenges and to become more than, than uh, the sheepish masses that he, that he felt human beings had allowed themselves to become by the time he was writing in the 1890s. And he had a lot of, actually, I think, very powerful and positive critiques regarding modernism and dedication to technology. And, and so he talked about the limits of those things. And I think that, that in that sense, there's some definite value to what Nietzsche was saying. Uh, the Ubermensch you guys are, are familiar with now, we talked about that, his, his whole concept of the Superman, as opposed to this notion that Nietzsche was, was um, anticipating and 
aligning somehow with what the Nazis believed in the 1930s, you know, 40 years on from Nietzsche's lifetime. Uh, I think that's a very uh, dangerous argument. And, and actually, I do not think that, that Nietzsche, like, like many of his German intellectuals uh, of his own generation, I do not think that he would have gone along with the ideologies of Nazi fascism. But that has been a charge that has been kind of wielded against Nietzsche over the years. Still, it is true that, that Nietzsche's version of existentialism is, in a sense, what we would call nihilistic. Uh, he he does, does not believe that there is overarching universal, uh, that there's a way for human beings to address and to um, universally connect to some sort of overarching meaning in life. Uh, so he's very much centered, on, like a lot of the existential writers, he is centered on this creation of oneself, uh, definitely oriented around the notions of, of patterning one's life on, uh, you know, I, I use the term living large in class, and what he of course meant is by kind of hearkening back to the, the Greco-Roman versions of what it meant to be a human being. Uh, contribution, uh, powerful contribution, uh, very meaningful legacies that he thought the Greeks and the Romans really captured better than Western Europeans during his own lifetime. And, uh, and yet, you know, there is, there's definitely a sense of disconnect and sorrow in, in a lot of Nietzsche's writing. And, and that part of it stands out too. The other thing that I do want to mention because I've seen some reviews coming in, trickling in of a couple of films dealing with Nietzsche and nihilism. I love the, the, the fact that the Hitchcock film, Rope, by the way, which I guess, I guess I'll address that one right now. So Hitchcock and Rope, you see here. So I'm gonna post a link to you know, one clip from Rope and I'm not gonna talk about it too much right here because I have uh, you know, four or five students who are gonna be submitting their their links to their own five minute videos. I would say that Alfred Hitchcock's presentation of nihilism through the characters in the film is sometimes, and I think rightly critiqued as being, um, you know, kind of a bare bones, um, almost laughable, maybe an, an inept presentation of nihilism. And, you know, I, I get that critique. I would also say that, that Hitchcock wasn't necessarily trying to make a, a film about philosophy. He was using some bits and pieces of, of Nietzsche's supposed philosophy to populate the film with some very, um, very horrific, some very terrible, and I would also say naive characters. The two young men who are murdering, uh, who murdered their friend and who are trying to rationalize that, these are not they're not thinking through the process correctly. As we're, as we're corrected on, as we're told in the film when the Jimmy Stewart character finally confronts them and he, and he says essentially, look, you guys, you're taking everything that, that Nietzsche said and that I said, and you're taking it in a terrifying direction. Uh, there, is, there is at least the implication that maybe Nietzsche deserves some ownership for behavior like that. And you know the audience is is maybe meant to question it. I I do think it's an, a good film to use because it at least makes us ask whether that presentation of nihilism is an accurate one or whether it's just too rigid and underdeveloped. And I would I would say it's a little bit underdeveloped as far as a philosophical association. But it's still a good film to bring the whole you know the, the basic concept of nihilism to the forefront with. Okay, now I wanna talk about another concept. Go back to the screen here for a second. I wanna talk about another concept that Nietzsche believed in that I think is, is more often seen in films uh, that we're seeing, especially in the last five, 10 years, I've seen this uh, really come to the forefront more and more. It's a concept that Nietzsche called eternal recurrence. And it's basically, it connects to, to the parts of his philosophy where Nietzsche, of course, did not believe that there was overarching universal purpose, that there was not, Nietzsche believed that there was not uh, 
overarching connectivity that was objective and uh, and universally sound and true in one particular moment. Nietzsche believed that in a sense because of this notion of eternal recurrence that human beings are, are often experiencing, generations of human beings are often experiencing life in very consistent patterns, very similar to previous generations, and maybe even similar to earlier patterns in their own lives. And what he, one of the attachments he made to this was, was that this, this subscription meant, um, this, this notion essentially meant that human beings do not have as much uniqueness themselves, their culture, their time and place, historically, contextually, did not have as much uniqueness as people seem to claim. And, uh, and so, again, because not only are we dealing with Nietzsche and nihilism, but also because uh, Nietzsche's philosophy falls under that broader umbrella of existentialism, there is definitely this idea that human beings are not dealing with objective universal truth that can be explained rationally and logically, but rather human beings are inventing their lives and their realities and explaining them through that inventing process. And, and in this sense, there's a reinventing process going on. So Nietzsche's concept of eternal recurrence uh, has, has actually had a lot of traction in recent years, and we've seen this in a number of films. And I just want to mention two in passing, and uh, I'm going to post a clip from, from one of these. Um, I actually haven't decided which one, but I, I'm referring to the film Arrival from 2016, uh, the alien film, and then another sci-fi film, actually, Edge of Tomorrow. Um, sometimes in the European markets, it was just referenced as live, die, repeat, a uh, film starring Tom Cruise and uh, Emily Blunt in the title roles. So first, for Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, in, in the film, the, the Tom Cruise character is, is killed and then reborn every time. Uh, and because they're dealing with this insectoid alien species that's invaded the planet and, and has corrupted human reality. And so uh, you, you see these two characters, the Emily Blunt character and the Tom Cruise character, they're trying to, to find a way. Hold on just a second, I'm gonna pause. I've got a thing that came up on my screen. Sorry guys, I just had a uh, dialogue box flash across my screen. I didn't know what it was telling me to do, but I think we're okay. So, so in Edge of Tomorrow, this concept of eternal recurrence is definitely brought to the forefront as, as Tom Cruise and, and Emily Blunt come up with these ingenious plans to break through the, the construct of reality by these invading insectoid you know, beings and um, you know, return the world to, to normal in a sense. And so the, this concept of eternal recurrence is on display constantly. Arrival is, I think, you know, one of the more ingenious films of the, the early 21st century. It's a uh, film by the director Denis Villeneuve, uh, who also made um, uh, Blade Runner 2049, and he's currently in the process of completing the, the newest film version of the, uh, the Frank Herbert novel Dune. But I really love what he did with Arrival. So the Amy Adams character and the Jeremy Renner character, uh, the two scientists, um, uh, she's actually a linguist and he's a scientist. Uh, they, they are forced to, to try to explain the, you know, the arrival of the, these alien species and the whole concept of time is very much at the forefront of this film. And you see that through the, even the way in which um, the Amy Adams character is remembering, seems to be remembering her daughter. Uh, we're, we're led to believe that this is a, a past memory. And yet we find that the opposite is true. 
And, and again, what this is doing is it's, it's kind of walking us through very much a, a Nietzschean concept of eternal recurrence. So I just, I wanted you to be aware of that, both very good films. Um, so Rope, we've already talked about. So Francis Ford Coppola, uh, the film that I want to mention in passing is Apocalypse Now. I'm not, I mean, you, if you know Coppola, you probably know that he made the Godfather films. Uh, another great film from the 1970s actually was a film called The Conversation, but I'm not going to dig into that film. It's, uh, it's not central to what we're talking about here. Apocalypse Now is certainly a film, not necessarily a film that, that captures Nietzsche per se. It's much more associated with the broad concept of nihilism. And it, it brings that to the forefront through the, the hectic, horrific realities of the Vietnam War, in which the, the title character, played by uh, Martin Sheen, is sent to find and assassinate a, an American colonel named Kurtz, played by Marlon Brando, who has uh, ostensibly kind of gone insane and started uh, using his troops to commit atrocities. And uh, it is a very dark film in the sense that, I mean, uh, by the way, it's a film that um, if you've watched, you know that this is, is there, there are disturbing elements to it. And that is entirely the point. Coppola, who by the way, is, is a believer, he's a, a devout Catholic. Uh, Coppola is, is bringing to the forefront the idea that we're, you know, in this, in this framework, in the the catastrophic realities of war that are seen in Vietnam. No one is safe from descent, from descent into, um, into horror, into evil. And, and he, you know, he's certainly framing this nihilistic question, you know, what, what, where do we find meaning? Where, where is the meaning to be found in situations such as this? And uh, the, the river, you know, the, the, um, the travel upriver by the Martin Sheen character, um, Captain Willard is his name in the film. The Captain Willard character, uh, it's not just a travel upriver, it's, it's kind of meant to be his, his uh, progression through life in a sense, right? So the, the movement up the river to find Kurtz has more meaning to it. And that meaning is, is constantly in question. Is there meaning? What meaning might there be? Are, are we just, uh, do we just try to construct our own, our own meaning through these, you know, fractious moments that surround us, or is there more universal constructive meaning? And it's it's very much at the forefront of that film. And when, of course, when Willard finally does find Kurtz, well, we are very clear, very quickly, in fact, that indeed Colonel Kurtz, a person that was was presented to us as someone who who may at least seem, may have seemed to be impervious to uh, these moral and ethical assaults on one's character, and yet he has fallen. He's completely fallen. He's given himself over to a, a life of chaos and, and questionable meaning, and it's a very powerful observation. Ah, uh, David Fincher. So nihilism and David Fincher films, uh, the, the reality is this. So the film like Fight Club, for instance, um, is, is the film I want to just mention in passing. And Fight Club actually borders a number of different genres. I'm going to be talking about it again with both existentialism and postmodernism. But I would just say in passing that there is definitely a nihilistic component to the, the Fight Club film. If you haven't seen it, um, I'm afraid I, I can't really say much about it because the first rule of Fight Club is we do not talk about Fight Club. And the second rule of Fight Club is also that we do not talk about Fight Club. Sorry, guys, I couldn't resist, I couldn't resist that uh, famous line from the film. Uh, Fight Club starring Brad Pitt and Edward Norton definitely mines the depths of, of a nihilistic framework along with these components of existentialism and postmodernism. So I'm going to be coming back to that film. I don't need to hone in on it a whole lot right now. Okay, so uh, I, for today, that's actually 
all I wanted to do, I wanted to frame a few films and bring them to the forefront for you. I want you to not only watch this, I will be posting this particular Zoom lecture for you, but I also wanted you to be aware that I'll be posting a few links to, there, there's gonna be another link to an existential comic on Nietzsche that I think you'll just you know, get a good laugh out of. And then I'm gonna post a few of these film links as well that I, that I think will help you connect to the, the, notion, the ways in which uh, both Nietzsche and concepts of nihilism are, are mined and brought to the forefront in various parts of pop culture. All right, guys, uh, just keep in mind that, uh, that uh, I'm definitely praying for you. I hope you're doing really well. And uh, I, I think we're going to be able to progress forward in our course here and, and make it a good one. So uh, miss seeing you, but I hope you're well. And, and I will look to connect with you guys again through a Zoom lecture on, uh, on Monday then. So this, this will be the post for Friday the 3rd. And then I will be doing another post for our topic on Monday, April 6th, okay? Take care of yourselves. See ya.